Hi, I'm Alistair, and this is a video about how you can use a digital oscilloscope to help debug and fix problems with your Arduino projects. So I'm in the middle of building an escape room in a box at the moment, and at the end of my last video I showed how I'd cut out these panels and I'd installed them in the box and it was all looking great. And almost as soon as I'd finished doing that I had to rip them all out again because even though it was looking good it just wasn't behaving the way it was meant to anymore and I couldn't work out why. So what's meant to happen is that each of these panels here has their own Arduino Nano behind them and they are all connected using a Pigeon bus network. So what's meant to happen is that there's data and messages being sent between all of these different modules, but none of them were behaving the way they were meant to, none of them were reacting to the messages that were meant to be sent. So the master device here was meant to interrogate each of the modules to see what's there and it wasn't getting any responses. The modules here were meant to send data back to the master device, they weren't getting acknowledgements of the messages, and I just didn't know what was going on. So there's two tools that are really useful for debugging kind of problems like this. Um, the first one is a multimeter like this. So a multimeter will let you measure the voltage between any two points in a circuit, or the resistance between them, or the current that's being detected. And it's also really good for uh, measuring whether two points of a cable are connected, for example, or whether there's any kind of break in the circuit at any point. An oscilloscope, in contrast, well, this is good for actually uh, letting you visualise the data that's being sent down a signal line. And bearing in mind that the devices didn't seem to be responding to the signals I thought they were being sent, um, I tried to use an oscilloscope to check what was going on. So this is the underside of the board, and you can see I've got the individual Arduino Nanos underneath each panel, and I've got an ESP32 here underneath the main controller. And those are all wired together through these cables here. Um, so there's actually three uh, lines inside these cables. There is a ground, which is being shared between all the devices. There's a five volt line, which is supplying power to all of them. And then there is a single data line. And they are all going to these um, Wago connection blocks here. So we've got the ground lines, the data line, and the five volt power line. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to use my scope to listen in on that data line to see if I could look and analyse what was going on with the messages that were being sent between the device on the data line. So what I did was I, uh, I actually had a spare input terminal on these Wago connector blocks. So I wired one more cable in, just as if I was going to plug a, another panel module in. But instead of plugging it into a panel, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that into the probe on my oscilloscope. So um, an oscilloscope probe, this is much like a probe you might have used on a multimeter. Um, it's got a little bit on the side here, and I'm going to connect that to the ground line. So that's just a little crocodile clip there. And then the end of the probe here, um, if I pull this down, a little sort of hook comes out. I'm going to hook that onto the signal line. So there we go, that's my probe connected. And now if I just pop that down and turn the oscilloscope on, so this is only a very uh, basic oscilloscope. Um, you can get much more complicated, much more expensive ones as well. But actually, um, this has got most of the functionality you want to use. And it's very handy being kind of portable. It's uh, got a USB rechargeable battery in it, so you can take it to uh, different sites easily. It's actually got two channel inputs. I'm only going to use one channel, though. And um, that's going to be this uh, blue line here, which is going to give us sort of a live real-time signal of the um, data that gets sent over that blue signal line that I plugged the probe into. So uh, now that that's running, what I'm going to do is, hopefully you can see that, I'm going to reset the ESP. So this is the master controller. And when I do that, what should happen is it will uh, ping each of the modules on the network. So we'll see some activity on that network line. And with a bit of luck, there you go. So you see that flickering blue line there that's showing the packets of data that the ESP was sending. Now, it was a little bit hard to um, see what was going on there because it kind of flicked too quickly. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to change the uh, settings on the oscilloscope so we can see that a bit clearer. The first thing I'm doing, going to do is I'm going to change the voltage scale. So if you think of this uh, like a graph, we've got the, the y-axis, that's the voltage. Um, I'm going to set that down to uh, maybe 0.2 for each of these squares. And then we've got the x-axis, that's going to be time. So at the moment that time scale is 20 microseconds and let's change that so it is something more like um, one, one millisecond instead will probably be about right I would think. So we'll do that. Um, so now if I do that same thing again one more time, so let me reset the, Arduino, uh, the ESP again and hopefully what you'll now see is a slightly clearer scale of what that um, data being sent. There you see, so we can see much more clearly now. So we've got um, a series of high and low pulses and those correspond to the equivalent of a, a digital right high on that pin that's connected to the signal line and a digital right low. So we've got this logic levels of high and low and in fact if we were to zoom in we could pick out exactly the value that was being sent, this uh, kind of oscillating pattern of highs and lows. If we were sending some character data, for example, that had been encoded as uh, an ASCII value and then translated into binary, you could literally see the, the ones and zeros that are being sent. So it's really pretty cool to be able to literally analyze at that level what's going on. Um, there's one other useful feature though, is that you'll still see that, you know, now I'm talking about it, we can't see the signal anymore, it's gone off the screen. So um, I'm going to look at the trigger function here. So this um, allows you to, uh, kind of rather than showing a, a real time image, what we'll say is okay, it's sort of a bit like take a snapshot when a rising or a falling edge is seen on that signal. So if I set that to uh, trigger mode instead, like that, and then one more time, let me reset the ESP and we'll just wait for it to do its boot up sequence. And this time what we'll see is that rather than continuously scrolling, when, here we go, we see that pattern start to come in and it will kind of pause it as a screenshot there. So we can actually analyze that signal more detail. Now, some of the things you can do with this now, for example, is we can actually look at the quality of that signal. What you really want is a nice crisp set of uh, high and low values. You don't want kind of um, you know, if you're looking at a digital signal, this is, we don't want to have like smooth curvy lines. We'd like to have really nice square edges. And this is not a perfect signal. It could be worse, but it could definitely be better. And one of the useful things that you can use in oscilloscope, for example, is that we talk about things like signal degradation. If you run a very long wire from an Arduino to a sensor a long way away, for example, over uh, a distance of cable, the quality of those edges kind of uh, degrades and gets worse. So this will actually let you look at the quality of a signal at any point in a line. That's pretty useful. Um, but all I wanted to check really at the moment was, was uh, a signal being sent. And yes, it was. Um, I could see it clearly coming out of the master signal and I could also see it coming out of the devices. So why weren't they working? Um, and in fact, as it happens, the answer ended up being um, sort of a bit more trivial in a sense. I didn't really need to, to use the logic analyzer. What I did though is I started to attach the probe to different points in the uh, around the circuit. So first of all, I attached the probe uh, right at the master device here, and I could see that um, you know data was being sent from the master device. And then I attached the probe at uh, the receiving device and it wasn't being received there. So I knew something was going wrong. And I gradually removed each of the modules in turn. And it seemed to be that when a particular module was attached into the um, bus here, this was making the whole thing break. And I thought, well, what's going on here? And like I said, it ended up being a, a really trivial problem in the end. Um, if I take the camera off the stand, I can show you a little bit closer what happened. So I'm using these breakout uh, boards to hold some of the Arduino nanos up. And they have these very useful rows of uh, pins here that expose each of the uh, GPIO pins in a, in a line of three pins. So we have uh, ground, power, and signal in a line. Uh, this one also has ground, power, signal. This one, this one, this one. However, the module at the top, which is where I plug my ESP into, you'll notice I have 
ground, signal, power. I had them in different order. And the thing is, even after I did that, I noticed I'd used a different order, which is why I coloured this cable differently. I used white uh, for ground, whereas on these ones here, I used uh, the more conventional black for ground, black for ground, black for ground. So I even knew this was potentially going to trip me up later, made a dedicated cable to this one, but then when I came to reassemble the box, I plugged the wrong cable into the wrong module, and effectively I was shorting the signal line to ground all the time. So when I came to read it with my oscilloscope, I was just getting a zero all the time. And the funny thing was, everything else was still working. Power was still working correctly and being received because I plugged in USB cables to try to analyze the problem. So the devices were receiving power from USB, which ironically I'd only actually plugged in in order to try and diagnose the problem, but they ended up masking the problem because I thought, well, the cable must be plugged in right because they're powered up. Uh, and in fact, it wasn't. So it was all a bit of a mess, but we fixed it in the end. Um, so the end result was I didn't actually really need to look at the quality of the signal at all, but it was a very useful way of letting me see at what point in the network the data was being lost. And ultimately that kind of let me uh, figure out what the problem was. Uh, so yeah, these are, these are very cool little devices um, and I hope you found that useful.